What's up everyone, Matt here. So when you first sign up to become a Patreon supporter of mine, you get an email that says, hey, there's a private G G uh, Google Drive folder. Give me a Gmail address so I can add you to it so you can get access. Uh, then after that, when you get access, you get another email that says, congratulations, you've been added. Somebody's noticed that that final email comes from an AppSheet app and they asked me, am I controlling the permissions for that Google Drive folder with an AppSheet app? Yes, I am. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so uh, all of this is driven off of a script that I came up with. I found on the internet and kind of modified. You know how it goes. Um, so everything runs from a script because, you know, it, it, Google, Google products, it, all of them are built off of the Google script in the back end. So anything that you can do with like a mouse clicking, tapping or whatever, you can do with a script. You just gotta find how to do it, figure it out, right? Um, so if I show you here what I've got, there we go. If I show you this, so this is the folder, right? So it's just a regular Google Drive and I'm talking about modifying this stuff right here. Um, and so what I've done is uh, I have a table that I've created uh, and it's inside of an AppSheet app and what I've got here is a space to add the email and then I've got, you know, like when they start, when they're, when they're done, this, that, and whatever. And when I save a record to this, I'm also saving, if I come back here to this sheet, um, I'm also saving uh, a temporary variable here inside the workflow trigger column uh, that tells the system what we're supposed to be doing. So if you just signed up, it's add access. If you've um, if you removed your support for the Patreon thing, then I'm removing your access to the folder, and so I'm removing it's remove access. Um, and I have a script that's watching this sheet for any modifications, and based on what happens, it makes you know certain determinations. And this is that script right here. And so uh, there's two parts to this. So. I have access control. So this is the part that's watching the sheet, determining what it should do. Should I make any modifications? Do I need to make any changes? So it's looking at what sheet was changed, what sort of modifications were made, what data was actually submitted. And from that, it's figuring out whether or not we should be modifying the Google Drive folder. Uh, and then this little guy down here is all that it takes to modify the, the permissions, it's surprisingly simple. All of the complexity comes in verifying that you're supposed to be modifying the thing. It's all the checks and getting all of the data that you need before you execute things. Uh, so just to run through here on how this works, right? So the first thing that happens here um, is we pull the active spreadsheet. And then from that, uh, we get the active sheet, right? And then we check the sheet's name. And if the sheet's name is Patreon access control, then we do this if statement. Otherwise, you can see it stops all the way down here. That's the end. So you can see inside here, there's others, there's a whole bunch of other sheets inside here. And so any modifications made to all of these, this thing is watching, looking at all of these. And it's like, Okay, are you on Patreon access control? Nope, okay, I don't care. Nope, don't care. Nope, don't care. Nope, don't care. Yep, you are, okay. Well, what do we need to do if you are on Patreon access control? Okay, so the first thing we do is we need to find the workflow trigger and Patreon access email column numbers. And you have to find the numbers, a little, dot, little, little, num little deep dive into uh, Google scripts Everything works on numbers. So I need to know the number of the row, the number of the column that I need to use. And so we have to find a way to get those. And so I found a pretty cool little way to do this. The first thing you do is you pull the first row of the sheet because the first row is the headers. And so what I do is from the trigger sheet, I get a range and the range is A1 through one, literally, a1 through one, that whole first row right there. And from those, I'll get the values. And so this creates a list of all of the text values inside for this row right here. And now 
from that, then I can say there's this cool thing called index of, uh, and what you can do is you can feed it a value and you can say, here's a list, here's a value. What is the number of that value in that list? So, so I'm looking for workflow trigger, which is way back here. And so this looks through here and it counts all of these and it gives me the number of this workflow trigger. Now at the very end here, I have plus one because, well, when you do these things, uh, programmers, they always start from zero as one. So zero is really the first thing. One is really the second thing. So anytime that you do something where it gives you the index, like the number of what number is this in the list, it's always off by one. So you gotta add one to it to get the actual number that you need to use. And so we have the column number that we're supposed to be watching. So I called it column number to watch because this is like the trigger for the script. We're supposed to be watching that column. Um, and so you can change this value to whatever you want and the system will find that, that, that column. So even if you move it around, it's still going to find it. That's why I did it this way. So it's not hard coded. The only thing that's hard coded is the value it's supposed to be looking for the column name. So we get the column name, we get the number. Um, then we grab the active range. We get the active row. Um, this gives us a number. And from that, then I want to pull the cell that was modified from the, uh, the column that we're supposed to be watching. Um, so uh, on the trigger sheet, we get a range uh, from the active row with the column that we're supposed to be watching. So the active row is the row that you made the modification on. So we get that row number. And then the column number to watch again is this workflow trigger. And so this, and then one and one says only get one row, only get one column. So we're getting one cell. And so this workflow trigger cell is literally like the system goes, okay, we've got this and we've got this, and this is the cell that we need. And so it literally does this little X, Y thing and it grabs that cell. And then from that cell, I'm then grabbing what's the value inside that, if anything. Um, and then we drop into an if statement. So I check, is it add access or remove access? If it's neither of these, you can see the bottom of this is way down here. So if it's not add access or remove access, don't do anything. So it's only on those two triggers. So all of this up here, just to get the value of like the trigger that's been fired, that, that you put into the, the sheet. Now, dropping into an if statement. So once we have that value, um, what are we gonna do? So we drop into a try statement. So try is something that you can wrap some code into if there's an error. And then what you can do, you can so you say, try this code. Um, if it doesn't work, you can come down here and put a catch and you can catch the error and then I log the error so I know what it was. Um, so what do I do? From the, uh, the workflow trigger cell, I clear its content because it's a trigger thing and I don't want it to stay in there. I need it to go away. We stored that value inside this variable up here, my val. So we clear it, then we go through um, and we find the email column. So again, we do this index of from that header list. This time we're looking for Patreon access email. This is the column where I'm actually putting the email that the person needs to use. So this would be like, if you needed to pull whatever you needed to pull, this would be the thing that you need to, to modify, right? So this gives us um, the number of the email column, and then we grab the email from that row. So we do the whole get range, active row, email column, get the value. So this then becomes the email that we actually need to use. Uh, then we check and see, uh, is the active range, like we get the, the width of the range, and then we get the column of the active range. Now this is to check down here to check and see, was it a single modification that was made, like one value was changed, or is it a range of values that changed? Uh, it's something you gotta take into consideration, because if I'm adding the row, then the range that changed is going to be this whole range right here. It's not just going to be this guy and this guy because it does it all at once when it 
when it makes the uh, the edit, the modification, you know what I mean? So we check to see how big is the range and is the active call, is the column, this gets like the first column of the range, um, get the active column. Is that the column that we're supposed to be watching? Um, so if it is, then we execute the Patreon access subroutine. I'll go over that in a minute. Otherwise, the, the modification that was made is multiple cells. And so then we need to pull out the first one that we, uh, that we had the, the full out, we need to pull out the appropriate bits. And so it starts with, we find the start of the range, then we find the end of the range. And then we check and see is, uh, the column number to watch inside that range. I, just bear with me here. This is some stuff you got to do for <laughs> to check and make sure all of these things. Yeah. Um, so it's we're just checking to see if if the range that we modified has the column that we're supposed to be watching, right? So, like if I made a modification that only modified these, well, we're supposed to be watching this column down here. So the the modificate the range doesn't contain the column that we're supposed to be watching and it wouldn't fire off again it's all about these checks to make sure that we're supposed to be doing what we're supposed to be doing right um and so all of that to get to executing this subroutine so what do we do this subroutine we pass it two things we pass it the email and then we pass it the type um, and the type is this my val that we stored up here. It's the, um, the workflow trigger that was originally put in there. So it's either add access or remove access. And we stored that value here inside my val. And so we're passing that to Patreon access, this Patreon access function um, as type. That's the, the new variable that we've assigned it when we pass it down. Um, so this guy, what this does is the first thing it does is it grabs the folder. So using drive app, we get the folder by the ID. So you need to change this to put in the ID of the folder that you want to modify. Um, with that, it's uh, you can find the ID in the URL. Um, and then we run into a check. So we check if what is the type. If it's add access, then we take that folder and we add a viewer, the email, and then we log that we did that. Otherwise, if the type is remove access, you guessed it, we take that folder and we remove the viewer. And then we log that we did that. You see how it's surprisingly simple to modify the um, permissions of a Google Drive folder. It's literally just one line of code if you have the email, you know what I mean? Um, it's all, all that other craziness that I had to go through that took me 10 minutes to describe is just to grab, get the values that the person like actually submitted to the sheet and then checking the values to make sure that we're supposed to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, there might be some more efficient ways to do that, but I'm not really a, a programmer type person. I've learned everything just by hacking it together myself and figuring it out. So I will make this script available to you if you would like to use this for yourself. Um, if you have any questions about how I did this, if I forgot something, if I didn't cover it, if I went over something too fast, let me know what it is uh, that you're talking about. Maybe you could put a timestamp inside the comment and I will answer your questions. If it necessitates a deep dive, uh, I'll deep dive further, create a whole nother video on whatever sort of comments or questions that you have about this. That way I can answer all of your questions. Anyways, that's all I got for this. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the community.